What's up guys, you're watching Tuck TV and this is a quick recap of G-Shock Bangalore Open Air 2019. Check it out. So we just got back from 2019's edition of G-Shock Bangalore Open Air. Bangalore Open Air is one of the largest open air metal festivals that happens in the country. This took place on the 9th of February 2019 at Adia Farms in Yalahanga, Bangalore. So unlike the last year where the festival happened in around June or July, this time it seems to have happened earlier, but what a gig it was. Bands on the roster were the one and only Apart, Suffocation from USA, and along with them we had Godless from Hyderabad, Mass Damnation from Sri Lanka, Trainwreck from Bangladesh, and Kroor from Nepal. So we of course managed to arrive as soon as possible. We were in fact a little late, we missed one band that went up on stage thanks to epic banger traffic uh, but we did manage to see the main act so the first act that took stage once we arrived was Trainwreck uh, this band hails from Bangladesh they've got some amazing music if you haven't checked them out be sure to see the link in the description so this group has a very Lamb of God-ish type of sound if I have to give a simple description they had a very energized set throughout they kept the crowd engaged uh, had some killer bass and drum lines throughout their songs. Got to love the touch of the inclusion of their uh, flag. So we had the guitarist to sort of have this flag uh, attached to his guitar and it, it was pretty nice to look. Few technical mishaps, I think the lead guitarist uh, had some issues with uh, sound during the initial uh, part of their set but they were able to sort that out and they were able to play some great music. And although they have this Lamb of God-ish type of sound, what sets them apart is the groove elements in their music. There was also a bit where the guitarist and the drummer did a swap. Uh, that was quite interesting to see uh, in one of those songs. The guitar tones were nice and strong throughout their setlist. Uh, although it was getting a little bit drowned in the bass frequencies. Um, I'm not sure if you know they need to tweak their sound or whether it was because of the situation live. Uh, but it wasn't too big of an issue, everybody had fun. And not to forget, the frontman delivered some really powerful vocals. Next up on stage was Mass Damnation. This band hails from Colombo, Sri Lanka. Uh, again, towards the modern American heavy metal slash Lamb of God-ish type of sound. Uh, but then again, what separates them was more of gent elements. This band also had great energy. They had some amazing energy throughout their set list and you know, they kept the crowd going. Not sure if this was a mixing issue or what, but the vocals were a little bit on the weaker side. Uh, they were getting drowned out uh, in the mix. But personally, I enjoyed this band a lot and if you haven't, be sure to check out Mass Damnation. Following Mass Damnation, we then had the Nepalese death metal band Crew come on stage. This was one of the only bands of the evening to have a female fronted vocals and boy, she was good. Great drum lines, great guitar lines. The bassist was simply amazing and some of the bass lines he played were equal to some really good leads. This band of course had the most technical difficulties while starting off. The bass guitarist had an issue with his instrument after which he had to borrow. Uh, another bass guitar uh, and then we also had some rings that afternoon which sort of were playing spoiled sport uh, but thankfully it didn't last very long so the crowd got back in and had a blast. I'm not sure again if this was actually happening or it's just me but I did feel there was a little bit of uh, volume fluctuations at the bass end uh, but then again it wasn't a big deal it didn't hamper the show. Also an interesting scene the guitarist was uh, left-handed but I think he had purchased a right-handed guitar and just flipped it over Jimi Hendrix style so I don't know that that looked pretty cool now again I'm not sure if it's the technical uh, difficulties uh, or the weather or a combination of both but this band definitely needed a little more of you know crowd pumping and they sort of had to engage with the crowd a little more compared to the others but great show overall this band plays some interestingly good death metal and if you haven't checked them out be sure to give them a listen Following Kroor was the Hyderabad act Godless that took stage and man were these guys amazing. They're professional from the get go, uh, great sound, great overall tone, great engagement with the crowd and they played some fantastic numbers that really got the crowd going and that's why we had mosh pits and even a wall of death. Vocalists definitely had a massive presence uh, throughout the time on stage, not that the others didn't but this guy was just 
massive. He was there. Vocals were absolutely killer and his crowd engagement was on point. Then of course the next band to come on stage was none other than Abad. So for those of you who are wondering who Abad is, what are you doing here? This man had the most massive showmanship I have ever seen. Straight from the get-go, he gets up there uh, with him and the musicians and they sort of made themselves heard. Great tone throughout. Abbott played a blistering set, uh, including some songs from uh, the previous band he was with, Immortal. And uh, there was a mosh pit all the way through. You've also got to love this man's showmanship. He doesn't sort of take himself too seriously and definitely knows how to have a good time. And so was the crowd. The final act on stage, of course, was the American-based slam death metal pioneer Suffocation who took stage and all I can say is they simply destroyed the stage in a good way. This was single-handedly one of the most powerful stage performances I have ever witnessed. These guys were absolutely unstoppable. They have a career spanning about 30 years, so they played a lot of old stuff, they played plenty of new stuff and it was simply mind-blowing. My personal opinion, bass guitarist Derek Boyer simply stole the show. Firstly, he had an amazing looking bass guitar. If you haven't checked it out, you should. It's called Creature with a K. And what was unique about this was not only was it massively powerful, but you know, Boyer has this unique style of sitting it down on the ground and playing it. And this bass was built sort of uh, for that function. Uh, even if you see in some of the clips, it's, it's got the sort of hoof which is made of steel which you can sort of just keep down on the, on, on the stage and play and holy man, it was, it was amazing to see. Terence Hobbs was blistering as usual and they played an amazing set. Uh, the crowd had a lot of fun, they got a lot of songs that they were looking forward to. And finally, things drew to a close at around about 10 p.m. Despite uh, the music ending at this time, uh, the bar and you know food was still available for everybody uh, till about 12 o'clock. Quickly summarizing, how was it? I'd simply say Bangalore Open Air has delivered once again and they've delivered flawlessly. The gig of course is located in Adya Farms which is quite far from the city centre. But the organisers had this covered by providing shuttle services. They did the same last year as well uh, and they've done it this time. As, so, you know, that's great and simply you know made travel easy for a lot of folks things were well organized the organizing was pretty much the same as the last time you had a stage on one side and then you had you know the food stalls uh, and the merchandise stalls on the other i do feel there were fewer merchandise stands compared to last time but whatever merchandise they had was pretty good so of course you had the regular merch stand selling you know band t-shirts and all of that and you also had another stand who was selling cds and vinyls Pretty cool. There was also food counters, a separate one for vegetarians and another for non-vegetarians and then there was a counter where you had to buy tokens and then, you know, sort of buy your food. There was a little bit of confusion on this aspect because if I recall correctly, last year we had to buy tokens to buy merchandise as well, uh, but then this time it was separate for food and separate for merchandise. We ended up in a situation where we bought a few more tokens, but it wasn't a big deal. We were able to you know, exchange it with some folks out there. And of course, not to forget, we met some amazingly cool and awesome people out there. Uh, to all you guys who met us, thank you so much for the love and support. You know, we had a blast meeting you guys and we look forward to working with some of you, you know, any of you, if you're willing to work with us in the future. Big kudos to the organizers, to Salman and his team. It is not easy to organize a show of this magnitude and, and to execute it so smoothly and they have done it yet again. Overall, it was the same equipment as last year, more or less. Uh, so that's a good thing because Bangalore Open Air had some top-notch equipment last year and they have spent no expense this year as well. My only gripe throughout the show would be uh, possibly the light situation. I don't know, for whatever reason, you know, the lights were a little too flashy and they were focused on the crowd. And I personally had a problem, um, you know, because there were times I just couldn't see the band. The lights were just flashing in, in your eyes and after one point, you know, your eyes will tire. Um, so that's my only gripe. But of course, you know, as the night went on, we sort of got over it, still had great time. We had great fun. So, were you at Bangalore Open at 2019? What are your thoughts and opinions about it? Let me know in the comments below. 
give this video a thumbs up if you like what you see and subscribe to us be sure to also hit that bell icon to get regular updates from us this is Tuck TV signing off until next time 